your brother, your friend, your dietitian, back again for another installment in spirit, nutrition. Where was I in 2010? Let's get it popping. So where was I in 2010? What does that even mean? Where did it come from? So I'm watching a video by this guy named Nino Brown. I'm on Facebook, right? I don't listen to this guy's music, but his videos are epic when it turn when it comes to the inspirational videos he makes. They're phenomenal. So watching his YouTube video, and he explains how, not YouTube, Facebook video, and he explains how he was living in the projects with his children with no furniture in 2010. And he said there was some type of hurricane or um, snowstorm or something um, that caused the roof to cave in in the projects. And he didn't know what to do. He didn't have any money. But he was hanging out with all these rip or rip rich um, rap guys and he caught them up and they laughed at him when he asked hey can i borrow some money you know this is a situation that in the projects they laughed at him and later on now in 2016 he's living in abundance and those guys that were laughing at him work for him so it made me think where was i in 2010 and some people watching this video, they may actually have been in a better place than they are now in 2010. But the principle remains the same, what I'm going to explain. In 2010, I started reflecting back to 2010 when I watched that video. And what I realized was in 2010, I was asked out. I'm talking about asked out. Uh, 2010, I was in my sophomore year of college for half the year. Um, and then the other half, I was entering into my, the first semester of my junior year at Howard University. But I was three years past, or two and a half years past, my mother having passed away. Traumatic experience. Um, I was also very poor and struggling and malnourished at Howard University. And I remember that... Um, Although I was hard working, I was getting good grades in school, I didn't have the support of friends, or excuse me, of family financially. And so um, I remember one summer, summer of 2010 actually, I was looking for jobs. So I was in downtown DC, going to every store, all day, every day, hunting for jobs, talking in my network, reaching out to people, and I could not find a job. But I needed money to eat. See, I'm from the flock that if you don't, Work, you don't eat. Because there's some guys now my age that live off of women or live off of people. I didn't get down like that. So if I didn't work, I did not eat. So I had to hustle and work. So what did I do? I ended up getting food stamps from the government. Yes, resorting to the government food stamps after having searched and scavenged and looked for jobs for, I don't know, a month. I couldn't find anything. In the hot, uh, you know, winter, uh, this winter, in the hot summer heats, this hot summer months in DC, I got food stamps, actually bought water with the food stamps and ice, and sold the water on the National Mall. So I'm a charming guy, um, so I'm selling the water, and they're going like hotcakes. And I would just re-up, buy more water, sell it, go back to, you know, go back and sell it, sell more. But I had to because I had to survive. And I remember my tagline was, um, ice cold water, come and get it, it's almost too cold. Ice cold water, it's almost too cold. So I wake up really early, get down there, and I would sell the water to all the tourists, right? Because on the mall, they were selling them for $2, and I was selling mine for $1. And they were really cold. Mine were colder than theirs. But there was one day where I woke up late and I kind of got down and missed a lot of the tourists and I was selling um, water. And days when I woke up early, I would set up in a spot, sell water, and then I would dip. And I would sell out fast. But when I came late, I was setting up and the people who were selling the, the waters officially for $2.25 um, were already set up. And I was taking their business, right? 
And so someone called the cops. And it was two brothers. They went to Morehouse. It was a shame. And they were about to arrest me. I talked my way out of it. Um, and uh, eventually I didn't get arrested. But they took all my waters, man. And they took my cooler. Also, I was living in a two-bedroom apartment with my sister, my brother. Actually, with my sister at the time. But it was really hot and the air conditioning didn't work. And we didn't have any furniture. And for the whole summer, we had to sleep out on um, the floor. And there were bugs because we were in Maryland. And it was like, you know, damn, they're tropical bugs, it seemed like. I don't know what they were. I'm from California, so I'm not used to the bugs I saw. But there were bugs that were crawling, you know, in through the, uh, through the, um, you have the screens and the windows, but somehow they got into the house. I mean, I don't know. It wasn't like if they were roaches or anything. They were just like beetles and little bugs, critters and things like that. But they didn't have anywhere to hide because we didn't have any furniture. So my sister was like depressed and sad. I was trying to fight depression and sadness. I was in a tough situation. And now I look back at 2016, just like Nino Brown, he's standing in front of a mansion, you know, his home with $50,000 in cash in his, in his hands. It's not really about the material things, but I look at where I am now, you know, living in abundance. In a couple of days, I'm about to go to Puerto Rico, fly out there and go see the old forts out there. Um, uh, the fort, I think it's called Fort El Morro. Um, so, you know, go to see some Moorish history in, out in Puerto Rico. Um, about to go see some of the most amazing beaches in the world. Uh, I'm living in abundance. I'm investing in real estate and passive income and, and business. Um, I'm healthy, strong, you know, uh, family, friends. Times change. Conditions change. Things can get better. I would have never known that in 2010, sitting there trying to sell waters and feeling defeated because the cops had shut down my parade. I would have never known that I would be where I am now. So if you're going through something that's crazy, something that's tough, something that's hard to overcome, know that you will reach your goal. You will reach your destination. You will overcome. Another thing that happened that year, 2010, I lost the house that I grew up in. We had a house for 10 years, West LA, prime real estate. Um, and we lost it. We lost it because my mother passed away. Um, we had a falling out with my, with my father who, you know, was living a, a street lifestyle uh, at the time. And so we weren't able to make the payments and the neighbor got it from us from the, for a penny on the dollar. So we lost this big house that we lived in, you know, three, four bedroom house. And um, we were in total depression because we lost the house that we grew up in. We lost our mother a couple of years prior. Um, we barely got any money for the home and we were struggling in college, the three older siblings. And I would have never thought, they, they, sent, they went on to build large condos um, uh, million dollar houses actually not condos million dollar houses on the property where I live where, where you know they end up bulldozing our home and so I saw my house that I grew up in bulldozed big homes million dollar homes were set up on top of the house where I lived and I never would have thought that I would be a homeowner myself here now investing in real estate traveling the world ahora hablo español no confluyes. Estoy trabajando, desarrollando mi español, mejorando mi español. Pero he viajado a India, a México, a, a Guatemala y ahora a Puerto Rico. Right? I've learned how to speak another language. I've traveled, I'm invested, I'm living in abundance. I wouldn't have known that in 2010. It was a tough year in 2010. My whole college career was tough. Where were you in 2010? And where are you now? Be grateful. Your brother, your friend, your dietitian, back again for another installment. 
otra vez aquí grabando mi, vi, mi video. ¿Cómo se dice? Video aquí para YouTube. Good health and mad wealth. Your brother, your friend, your dietitian back again for another installment. Peace and blessings.